Today I will be sharing 25 of our all-time favorite slow cooker recipes, so you are like getting a full month's worth of slow cooker recipes right now. If you know me, you probably know by now how much I love using my slow cooker. It's one of my favorite things. Also, for these recipes today, if you want to fill up your freezer and make them into freezer meals, you certainly can. Let's get to my kitchen and let's start slow cooking this month. I was craving white chicken chili last week, so that is what we are starting out with today. To my slow cooker, I added in one large chicken breast. Next, add in a 15 ounce can of cantalini beans. Make sure you drain your can. Next, add in a 15 ounce drained can of great northern beans. And to give this added flavor, I'm adding in a four ounce can of diced green chilies. Now add in one diced yellow onion along with eight ounces of cream cheese. Make sure you cube your cream cheese just so it melts down the best. And then a tablespoon of minced garlic along with two cups of chicken broth. For the seasonings, I'm tossing in a teaspoon and a half of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and then a teaspoon and a half of cumin, oregano, and chili powder. The very last thing I added in was one fresh lime that I juiced. Give this a really good stir, put the lid on top, and cook this on low for about seven to eight hours. Now that the cooking time is up and my chicken is completely cooked through, I'm going to remove my chicken to a plate and I'm going to shred it up. Now I'm going to whisk the cream cheese in with the rest of the ingredients into my slow cooker. The cream cheese might look a little chunky and not super appetizing, but just whisk it in until it is well combined. But once your chicken is shredded, just add it in, stir this up, and then you could serve this delicious white chicken chili up. Here is my bowl of food. I topped mine with fresh salon a little bit of pepper, Monterey Jack cheese, and sour cream, but top yours with anything that you love. This soup is so rich and delicious. It is so perfect for this time of year. My family just loves it so much. This is the only pot roast recipe you will ever need. I've been making it like this for years and it is out of this world good. On my cutting board right here, I just peeled and I cut up five russet potatoes into smaller pieces. I also cut up a yellow onion into smaller pieces as well. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm adding in a large chuck roast and around that chuck roast, I'm just going to place the onions and the potatoes. I do wanna let you know, these are the vegetables that my family likes for pot roast but you could use any veggies that you like. Then I placed a pound of baby carrots around the roast. I'm going to season this up now. So I'm first seasoning this with a packet of zesty Italian seasoning mix. Next I'm going to sprinkle a packet of brown gravy mix over the top. I'm using the reduced sodium one but you could use the regular one as well. The last thing I'm adding is a tablespoon of ranch seasoning over the top and then I'm going to pour a cup and a half of beef broth over that cook this on low for eight hours or until your roast is perfectly tender. This pot roast is seriously phenomenal. That meat is like buttery soft. It just falls apart. And the potatoes and the carrots are cooked perfectly. They're not too soft, I promise. They really are wonderful. My entire family loves this roast. And like I said, I've been making it like this for years and I won't make it another way. This chicken noodle pasta is so perfect for this time of year. Also, it is so easy to make and it has simple ingredients that you might already have on hand. So into my slow cooker, I added three large chicken breasts. Over the chicken breasts, I'm going to be adding two 10 ounce cans of cream of chicken soup, or you could use any cream of soup that you like. Now to season this up, I'm using a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of paprika. I know there's going to be quite a lot of seasonings, but this is super good. I'm also adding in a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, dried basil, onion powder, and garlic powder. The very last thing I added in is three and three-fourths cup of chicken broth. I put the lid on top and I cooked this on low for about six to seven hours. 
After the cooking time was up and the chicken was cooked through, I removed it to a plate and I just shredded the chicken up with my meat masher. You could shred up your chicken with two forks or even like one fork. Your chicken will just be super tender and easy to shred. I added it back into my slow cooker. Now I'm going to add in my uncooked egg noodles and I'm using about nine ounces of those egg noodles. Just give this a stir and cook this on high for about 35 more minutes or until the egg noodles are nice and tender and then you could serve this up. Here's what my plate of food looks like. You might be thinking this probably won't be super flavorful, but I promise this is extremely flavorful. Those noodles soak up all of the flavoring and the juices in the slow cooker. This is just a wonderful meal. I did serve this alongside of a side salad and I used this Primal Kitchen Ranch dressing for the dressing and I thought it was pretty good. Now we're making this cowboy casserole. So the first thing you're going to want to do is brown up some ground beef. I have about a pound of ground beef Right here I am just going to cook up on my stove as you see my ground beef was a little bit frozen still I forgot to take it out in time to thaw but once my ground beef was cooked through I removed any excess grease in the pan then I added it right into my slow cooker next I'm going to add in about three large russet potatoes into my slow cooker I did peel and dice those potatoes now I'm adding in a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes along with a 15 ounce can of kidney beans Next, add in a 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup and a tablespoon of minced garlic. Now I'm going to add in one yellow onion that I diced along with my seasonings, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and oh my, did you see how much oregano I just accidentally added in? It just dumped out. I forgot that I didn't have the little stopper thing on my oregano, but you know, mistakes happen sometimes. I just took some out, but now I'm adding in a teaspoon of paprika and I'm going to give this a stir. This will cook on low for about six to seven hours. Now that the cooking time is up, I am going to give this a stir and seriously, my house was really smelling good. I'm going to add in three fourths cup of shredded cheddar cheese, let the cheese melt down and then you could serve this up. This is such a hearty, delicious meal. It is just like comfort food to the max for me. This meal also reheats super well in the microwave if you have any leftovers. Now we're making this creamy ranch chicken and my sweet mom used to make something so similar to this when I was growing up. To begin, I am just dicing this one red bell pepper into smaller pieces. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm adding in one can of cream of chicken soup. Next, I'm adding in one ounce packet of this ranch seasoning. This is going to give this recipe a ton of flavor, trust me. And then I'm adding in a half a cup of water and I am going to whisk this all together. Now that we have that well combined, I tossed in our one diced bell pepper along with our pound of chicken breast or you could use a pound of chicken tenderloins, whatever you prefer. Coat the chicken in that sauce, put the lid on top and this will cook on low for about four to five hours or until your chicken's completely cooked. Now, th now that our chicken's cooked, I'm just shredding it up with two forks. You see it is super tender. I could shred it with the back of a fork. It is really truly that tender. Now that our chicken is all shredded up, I added in a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese and four ounces of cubed cream cheese. Give this a really good stir, put the lid on top, and let this continue to cook on low for an additional 15 to 20 minutes or until everything is nice and melty. While that's cooking away, I am going to boil up our egg noodles. I like to serve this over egg noodles. You could serve it over any noodle or rice, kind of whatever you prefer. Here's the finished product. This is a wonderful, family-friendly, budget-friendly option. I really like how the bell pepper shines through and it's not too overpowering. Everything just goes really well together in this recipe. Like I said previously, serve it over anything you want. You could even make this lower carb and serve it over cauliflower rice. 
Now we're making these garlic beef bites with potatoes. We're going to start this recipe out by cutting one yellow onion into larger chunks. I'll set this to the side. Now I have about nine small to medium sized russet potatoes. I'm cutting my potatoes into kind of like bite sized pieces. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm going to add in two pounds of beef stew meat, followed by the onion that we just cut up. Next, you're going to add in a packet of beefy onion soup mix and then add in three-fourths cup of beef broth and then your seasonings a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper a tablespoon of minced garlic a half a teaspoon of onion powder garlic powder and oregano go ahead and give this a little stir after you're through stirring this up add the potatoes that we cut up earlier in and then after you add those potatoes in give this another stir to kind of like coat the potatoes put the lid on on top and cook this on low for about seven hours. Once this is finished cooking, all you have to do is serve it up. This is really, truly good, but if you want to make this extra, extra good, you could sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese at the end. I did also serve this with steamed broccoli. Now we're making this coconut curry. So to my slow cooker, I'm going to add in two 13 ounce cans of coconut milk. Any brand of coconut milk will work. Then you're going to want to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Next, two tablespoons of yellow curry powder. Then you're going to want to add in about a teaspoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of dried basil, a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and then one diced red onion. Give this a really good stir and as you will see this will change colors into kind of like a beautiful golden color. Now you're going to want to add in about two large chicken breasts and then coat the chicken breasts in the sauce. Cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about six to seven hours. Once the cooking time is up your chicken will be nice and cooked through. Just remove the chicken to a plate and you're going to want to shred it up. As you see it is super duper easy to shred. It is nice and shred a bowl and then add the shredded chicken back into the slow cooker and you'll notice the sauce is pretty thin so we're going to want to thicken it up we're going to make a cornstarch slurry so in this little bowl I have a tablespoon of cornstarch to the cornstarch I'm adding a tablespoon of cold water give this a stir and then add this right into your slow cooker let this continue to cook on low for about 20 minutes this will help thicken the sauce this is such a unique, fun meal to make in the slow cooker. It is so unbelievably good, and that sauce is amazing. I could pretty much just drink it, but we served this with steamed white rice and a little bit of naan bread on the side to dip into that sauce. We are making a meatless meal. The slow cooker creamy tortellini is amazing. So to your slow cooker, spray it with some nonstick spray just for easy cleanup in the end. Then add in an 18 ounce bag of refrigerated cheese tortellini. You could really use any type of cheese tortellini you like. Next, add in a cup of baby spinach. And then after that, add in eight ounces of cream cheese. Make sure you cube your cream cheese. It will just melt down better like that. Now I'm going to add in a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes, then toss in a cup and a half of chicken broth, then one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now for the seasonings, I'm adding in a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and Italian seasoning. Give this a good stir and then you are going to put the lid on top and cook this on low for about two and a half to three hours. This might not look like much once the cooking time is up, but give this a gentle stir just so you don't break the cheese tortellini. And then once the cream cheese is well combined, you could serve this up. And let me tell you, this has to be one of my all-time favorite slow cooker recipes. It is just so rich in flavor. My whole family loves it. And we had a little bit left over, so I had some leftovers for lunch the next day, and it reheats wonderfully.
Now we're making this beef ragu and I've never made anything like this on my channel in the past so to my slow cooker I'm adding in a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Next I'm going to add in a 6 ounce can of tomato paste. Then you're going to want to add in your seasonings. So it's just about a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a teaspoon of dried oregano. Next go ahead and add in your 2 and 3 fourths cup of beef broth along with just a tablespoon of minced garlic and then this is the fun part I'm adding in two large carrots that I diced right now next I'm going to add in two sticks of celery that I also diced and then one large yellow onion that I diced and then lastly one tablespoon of brown sugar give this a stir Now I'm going to add in about three pounds of chuck roast. I did cut my chuck roast into large pieces and I removed any big pieces of fat on the chuck roast. I'm going to give this a stir and then this will cook on low for about eight hours. Here we are eight hours later. I'm just going to remove the chuck roast pieces and I'll shred them into smaller pieces and then I'm just going to remove any like pieces of fat on the chuck roast right now. Then add it right back into your slow cooker and give it a stir. Then put the lid on the slow cooker and then let this cook for an additional 20 minutes. I love serving this beef ragu over these Amish egg noodles. I just find them at Walmart, my grocery store, and they're a little bit more money than regular noodles, but they're super good in this recipe. So I'm just going to boil up part of this bag, and then once the noodles were tender, I served this up. I just served the beef ragu over those noodles, and seriously, that ragu is so rich and delicious. You will absolutely love it. And then I was craving seasoning. Caesar salad on this night so I just made a Caesar salad on the side. Now we are making this beef and broccoli and oh man so to get it started you need about two to three pounds of chuck roast. Cut it into smaller pieces and remove any of the larger fatty pieces. Set that meat to the side. We're going to begin on the sauce now. Into this little bowl I added a cup of beef broth. Next add in a tablespoon of minced garlic then a tablespoon of minced ginger. Now I'm going to add in a half a cup of low sodium soy sauce, then a third a cup of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of rice vinegar. This sauce is so incredibly flavorful. Give it a really good whisk. Add the sliced meat right into your slow cooker and pour the sauce over the top. Kind of give it a stir to coat the meat in the sauce. Next, cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about five to six hours. Then about 30 minutes before the meat is done cooking, you want to remove about a half a cup of the sauce in the slow cooker. Do it carefully because it is hot. And then you want to have about a fourth a cup of cornstarch. Pour the sauce into the cornstarch. We're making a cornstarch slurry now to thicken up the sauce in the slow cooker but just give this a really good stir to make sure the cornstarch is no longer clumpy add that sauce right into your slow cooker and kind of give this a stir then add a frozen bag of broccoli in let this continue to cook for 30 more minutes or until the meat is fall apart tender and the broccoli is tender too Doesn't this just look so beautiful? It just looks rich and delicious, but we served ours over a bed of white rice and sprinkled sesame seeds over the top. If you want to make a beef and broccoli recipe, you need to make this one. Beef and broccoli is like one of my favorite things, and this one is like high restaurant quality. It's that good. We are making this easy healthy chicken with potatoes and carrots. I have about three pounds of golden potatoes right here. I cut them into wedges just like this. Now I'll set these potatoes to the side and I pulled out my slow cooker. Right into my slow cooker I'm adding two pounds of chicken breast that I cut into larger pieces. Nobody likes bland chicken so season the chicken up with about a teaspoon of pepper and salt. Then two teaspoons of paprika, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder. Stir this super well to coat the seasonings in the chicken and then you're going to want to add in the wedges that we just cut up earlier. Ah. 
After you have added your potato wedges in there, go ahead and add in your pound of baby carrots. The potatoes and carrots, of course, do need seasoning, so I just season them up with the same seasonings that I season the chicken with, about a teaspoon of pepper and salt, two teaspoons of paprika, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder. I gave this a little stir and then I put the lid on top. This cooked on low for about five to six hours, or you could cook this on high for about four hours, or until your chicken has completely cooked through. Here's what this dinner looks like. This dinner is so wonderful because you have your protein in there, your starch, and your veggie, so you really don't need to serve it with any side dishes. That chicken and those veggies are perfectly tender. They are also super flavorful. This is a really nice, healthy dinner to enjoy, and it's also very affordable. Now we're making this creamy chicken pasta and it is so heavenly. To your slow cooker, spray it with nonstick spray. Then you're going to want to add in your two large chicken breasts. It's about a pound and a half of chicken. Now I'm adding in a 10 ounce can of Rotel followed by two 10 ounce cans of cream of chicken soup. And then for the seasonings, toss in a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and then a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, and Italian seasoning. That is all you have to do. Give this a stir and then cook this on low for about six to seven hours or until the chicken is completely cooked through. When the slow cooker time is almost up, to a pot of boiling water on the stove, add in about a pound of penne pasta, cook it according to the package instructions while it's cooking away, and my slow cooker time is up now and my chicken is cooked through. I am just going to cube up my chicken, or you could shred it if you like. Just add that cubed chicken back into your slow cooker after you are through cubing it up. Next, you're going to want to add in about a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese and a half a cup of sour cream. This is going to make this kind of like a pasta sauce. It is going to be like rich, creamy, and cheesy. Give it a good stir and let the cheese melt down and the sour cream combine right now. Once the pasta is cooked through, all you have to do is add that cooked pasta right into your slow cooker and give this a stir. Kind of like let the sauce coat the pasta and then you could serve this up. And let me tell you, you are going to be eating a plate of this without realizing you finished the entire plate and you'll be going back for seconds. It really is that good. We really enjoy it. And then if you have any leftovers, this reheats super well to have it for lunch or dinner the next day. I don't make regular sweet and sour chicken often just because it is a little bit more complicated to make but this slow cooker version is easy and just as good so to get it started dice up your red bell pepper green bell pepper and a half of a yellow onion set those veggies to the side we're going to work on the sweet and sour sauce now so to this bowl add in a fourth a cup of cornstarch and a half a cup of apple cider vinegar whisk those two ingredients together super well until the cornstarch is no longer clumpy this will help the Thicken up your sauce. Next, add in two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, a tablespoon of minced garlic, third a cup of ketchup, a half a cup of brown sugar, and about a half a cup of pineapple juice. Whisk this together well. Over to my slow cooker, I'm adding in about a pound and a half of chicken breast that I cubed. You could always double this recipe for more people or half it if you'd like. I also added in the peppers and onions and then about 10 ounces of pineapple chunks. Add in the sweet and sour sauce and give this a stir. Cook this on low for about five hours or high for about three hours or until the chicken is cooked through. Oh man, I really wish that you guys could be smelling my house at this point. My house was smelling so good, like sweet and sour chicken. All you have to do at this point is give it a stir and then you could serve this up. We love to serve our sweet and sour chicken over white rice, but you could serve this over anything that you'd like. This really is so extremely flavorful, very easy to make, and then it is healthier than regular sweet and sour chicken because it doesn't have like a fried coating on it.
on it. It really is so good. Now we're making this beef stew and this is the only beef stew recipe you will ever need just because it is that good. To begin, I sliced my carrots, I diced my onion, and then I peeled and diced my four medium-sized russet potatoes. I'll set these veggies to the side. We're going to sear our beef stew meat right now. So over to the pan on my stove, I tossed in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil was hot, I grabbed my beef stew meat and I seasoned it with a little dash of salt and pepper. Then I added it right into my pan. You are going to sear this on high heat for about three minutes. This is going to make your beef stew meat nice and kind of like caramelized on the outside. It is going to give it so much great flavor and it's going to taste super rich and delicious. But if you don't have time to sear your meat, I totally understand. You could skip that step and this will still turn out so, so delicious. I added that beef stew meat right into my slow cooker along with a tablespoon of minced garlic, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Then for the beef broth, I tossed in about three and a half cups of that. Next, you're going to add in the veggies that we cut up earlier. And then you are going to add in eight ounces of tomato sauce, which is just kind of like half of this can. I do wanna let you know whenever I don't use a full can of something, I like to put the remaining amount of stuff that's in the can in a Ziploc bag and then I just freeze it. But for the seasonings, I added in two bay leaves, a teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of dried thyme, two teaspoons of dried rosemary, then a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I gave this a really good stir. You're going to put the lid on top and cook this on low for about seven to eight hours. Once the cooking time was up, I removed about three-fourths cup of the broth in the slow cooker and I added it to this bowl along with a fourth a cup of flour and I'm going to whisk this all together until it's smooth. This is going to help thicken our stew up. So now I'm going to add it right into our beef stew and I am going to just kind of whisk it in there and then I'm going to let this continue to cook for an additional 20 minutes and like I said, this will really thicken the stew up. After the 20 minutes of cooking, this was ready to serve. So now I'm just going to remove the two bay leaves because nobody wants to accidentally eat a bay leaf. And then I placed it into my soup bowls and then I served it. We like to sprinkle ours with a little bit of black pepper and salt on the top. This has amazing, rich, bold flavor. That beef stew meat is like fall apart tender. I wish I showed you that part, but this is amazing. You definitely need to try this. This recipe this fall and winter. Now we're getting started on this sweet garlic pork tenderloin. To the pot on my stove, we're going to be starting on the sauce first. I added a cup and a half of honey followed by three-fourths cup of low-sodium soy sauce, three-fourths cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of minced garlic, and lastly, two tablespoons of yellow mustard. You are going to bring this mixture up to a simmer and stir it occasionally for about 10 minutes and let this sauce thicken. Now that my sauce looks like this and has slightly thickened, I'll go ahead and set this to the side. Moving over to my slow cooker, I'll add in my two and a half pounds of pork tenderloin. Over the top of the pork tenderloin, pour the sauce, and then you are going to place the lid on the slow cooker and cook this on low for about six to seven hours. My favorite way of eating this is definitely with rice. So once it was almost finished cooking in the slow cooker, I started on my rice and we're going to be cooking the rice in the instant pot just because it's so perfect in the instant pot. I added my two cups of rinsed jasmine rice, a tablespoon of olive oil, and two and a half cups of water. I gave this a stir, I put the lid on top, and then all you have to do is press the rice button. It's super simple to cook rice in the instant pot. Rice is probably Probably my favorite thing to cook in the instant pot but now that our pork has finished cooking I'm shredding it up I'm using my electric hand mixer to shred it just to make everything super duper simple 
I served this over our Instant Pot white rice with steamed broccoli on the side, and I did sprinkle some sesame seeds over everything, but this pork has so much rich, amazing flavor. You are going to be wanting to make this over and over again, just like me. I love lasagna soup at this time of year, so that is what we are making now. Over to the pan on my stove, I'm adding in a pound of Italian sausage. Break the sausage up and cook it through right now. I'm breaking my my sausage up with my meat chopper and now that my sausage is cooked through I did notice some extra grease in my pan so I'm just removing any excess grease from my pan now. My mom taught me this paper towel trick when I was younger and it works pretty well to remove some excess grease. Now with my cooked sausage I'm just going to add it right into my slow cooker. After I added my sausage into my slow cooker I'm going to add in a tablespoon of minced garlic along with four and a half cups of beef broth or you could use veggie broth or chicken broth. Next, add in 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes along with 24 ounces of marinara sauce. You could use any type of marinara sauce you have on hand or that you like. For the seasonings, I'm keeping it simple with a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, and I'm going to give this a stir. Put the lid on top and cook this on low for about six to seven hours. Now that my cooking time is up, I am just going to add in about six uncooked lasagna noodles, and you do want to break those noodles up into smaller pieces just like this. Also, if you were in my special meal plan group, get excited for this month's bonus that you are getting on top of the regular meal plan. I put together some of our all-time favorite desserts in a little mini ebook. It is ready in the members area right now. I'm going to let this cook on high for about 40 minutes to cook the noodles. While that was cooking away, I just started on the cheese mixture now so into this bowl I tossed in a cup of cottage cheese along with a half a cup of mozzarella cheese and a half a cup of parmesan cheese I gave this a really good stir and there you go this is your cheesy mixture for your lasagna but now that my lasagna noodles are tender I just added this cheesy mixture in and I'm going to give this a good stir to melt the cheese and then you could serve it up I absolutely love lasagna soup so much. This soup is so rich, cheesy, and hearty. It is amazing. There is something I do want to warn you guys about. Every slow cooker does cook differently, so just make sure you test your lasagna noodles before you add in the cheese mixture to make sure they are nice and tender and not chewy in the middle. We are making my all-time favorite barbecue chicken sandwiches. These are so good. To the inside of my slow cooker, I sprayed it with nonstick spray. Next, I'm adding in two large chicken breasts. My chicken was frozen simply because I forgot to take it out in time to thaw. You could always use more chicken or less chicken depending on how many people you are feeding. Next, I added in a half a cup of barbecue sauce followed by a third a cup of Italian dressing. This Italian dressing gives these chicken sandwiches so much flavor. This cooked on low for about six hours and I did serve these barbecue chicken sandwiches with coleslaw and I really Really want to show you my favorite coleslaw recipe. So to this medium sized bowl I added in a 16 ounce bag of shredded green and red cabbage with shredded carrots. Then I added in a half a cup of mayonnaise, tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of pepper, a tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar or you could use regular white vinegar. Give this a really good stir and then you are going to want to put some clean wrap over the top top or a lid and let this sit in your refrigerator for at least two hours to chill. This barbecue chicken recipe is so easy because all you have to do when your chicken's cooked through is just shred it up in the juices in the slow cooker. I'm using my electric hand mixer to shred my chicken, but you could easily use two forks or a meat masher to shred it up. This barbecue chicken is so good. Also, here's what the coleslaw looks like whenever we're having like a party with my family. They always ask me to bring this coleslaw. It's just amazing. Here's my plate of food. We like to serve the coleslaw in the hamburger bun with the barbecue chicken, but you could easily serve it on the side. I also served this with some steamed corn and a side salad. You need to make this barbecue chicken recipe and the coleslaw.
Now we're making this classic chicken and gravy, so to my slow cooker I'm adding in two large chicken breasts. Over those chicken breasts I'm adding in one can of cream of chicken soup. If you don't care for cream of chicken, you could use cream of mushroom or cream of celery as a substitute. Now add in a tablespoon of ranch seasoning and a tablespoon of brown gravy mix. It's just one of these packets. I didn't add the entire packet in, just about a tablespoon. This cooked on low for six hours. Once this was finished cooking, I just shredded that chicken. As you could see, it's shredding with the back of my fork. It is super duper tender, and now it's time to serve it up. And here's my plate of food. I like to serve this with mashed potatoes and steamed peas. This chicken and gravy has so much great flavor. It is total comfort food for me and my family. I really love making this, especially on cold days. Now we are making my family's favorite slow cooker fiesta chicken. So into my slow cooker, I'm adding three chicken breasts. Next, add in two tablespoons of taco seasoning along with one can of corn. I didn't drain my can but if you want yours like a little bit thicker make sure you do drain your corn now i'm adding in one can of rotel the same goes for the rotel if you want it thicker just drain your rotel now i'm adding in one drained and rinsed can of cantalini beans on the very top i added an eight ounce block of cream cheese if you want less cream cheese just add half of the block or just a tablespoon anyway i cooked this on low for six hours once the chicken was cooked through i removed it to a plate and now I'm just going to shred the chicken into smaller pieces or you could cube it if you'd like. Add the shredded chicken back into your slow cooker and the cream cheese will look a little strange and clumpy, but don't worry, just give this a really good stir. It's going to incorporate in beautifully and look nice and smooth, but if you have my cookbook, just pull out your cookbook because this recipe is on page 162. So just follow the recipe in my cookbook and if you don't have a cookbook yet, you could get one below this video. I have it linked for you. My cookbook has over 100 easy affordable recipes. There's eight sections and a colored photo for every single recipe in this book. I can't wait for you to get yours, but we like to serve ours over tortilla chips, but you could serve yours like in a burrito for tacos, and we like to top ours with a little bit of cheese, tomatoes, onion, and avocado, but top yours with anything that you love. My husband just can't get enough of these French dip sandwiches, so I have about a cup and a half of water right here. Into this water, I'm going to be adding one packet of odd you gravy mix just add that right in there and then you are going to whisk this together until these two ingredients combine well and there are no more clumps from the au jus gravy mix now go ahead and set this to the side and i pulled out my smaller slow cooker i'm going to add in my meat i'm using about a pound of bottom round thin beef or you could use any type of like sirloin thin beef that you could find at your store you could use between one to two pounds and then i added that gravy mix right in there and this cooked on low for about six to seven hours or until my meat was tender and cooked through. Now I'm just going to be serving this in hoagie rolls so I placed some hoagie rolls on my sheet pan. You're just going to want to add some of that meat right in there. Try to remove any of the excess juice from the meat so the rolls don't get soggy and then I'm going to be adding slices of provolone cheese over the top. Broil this for about a minute or two or until the cheese is perfect perfectly beautifully melty. I can't even explain how good these French dip sandwiches are to you. And then we like to serve them with some of the juice from the slow cooker. Just dip your sandwich right in there. These sandwiches are so rich and delicious. Ah, they're just good. I serve them also with some strawberries. Now we're making these slow cooker chicken fajitas. So over to my cutting board, you're going to want to start out by cutting up your bell peppers. I'm using a red one and a green one. Cut them into strips just like this. You want to make sure the strips aren't too thin or the bell peppers will get mushy in your slow cooker. But into my slow cooker, I added about two to three chicken breasts and I did slice my chicken into strips as well. Just add those bell peppers in and now you're going to want to add in your seasoning. Add in about two tablespoons tablespoons of either fajita seasoning or taco seasoning. Just give this a stir and you're going to want to cook this on low for about five to six hours or until the chicken is completely cooked through. Once you're
your chicken's cooked through, you could just serve this in tortillas or you could serve this any way you like to. And here's my plate of food. I served mine in tortillas with a little bit of cheese, avocado, and some sour cream. These are so good. And then you could also make these into quesadillas if you'd like. We like to do that when we have some remaining for the next day for lunch. This chicken with wild rice and vegetables has to be one of my all-time favorite slow cooker meals ever. To get it started off, I'm just going to dice up my vegetables, just an onion, two sticks of celery, and three large carrots. I'm going to bring my vegetables over to my slow cooker, just add the veggies right in there. Next, you're going to want to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic, along with three cups of chicken broth. Next, add in your chicken. I'm just using about a pound of chicken breast and I did cube the chicken into kind of like smaller bite-sized pieces and then for the seasonings add in a dash of salt and pepper and then a teaspoon of dried thyme and a teaspoon of dried oregano now I'm going to add in one cup of wild rice you want to make sure it's the regular wild rice not like instant rice just regular wild rice then I added in one cup of frozen peas I'm going to give this a really good stir and this is going to cook on high for about two and a half hours and I know sometimes when rice is cooked in the slow cooker it comes out mushy and not appetizing at all but seriously if you follow this recipe it will come out amazing 10 out of 10 you will love it but once my rice was tender and the chicken was cooked through I added in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese I let the cheese melt down and then I served this up and if you're not a huge cheese fan you could of course always leave the cheese out but here's my plate of food this is so good and flavorful. My entire family loved this meal. I actually made this over at my parents' house and served it up for them over there. We had some extended family there too that really enjoyed this dinner. We served it alongside of a salad and a dinner roll. Growing up, my mom used to make this huge batch of spaghetti sauce, so I'm really excited to make it for you today. To the pan on my stove, I added one pound of sausage, or you could use ground beef if you prefer ground beef in your spaghetti sauce. I'll break that sausage up and I cooked it through. Now that my sausage has cooked through, I'm just removing any excess grease in the pan. I'm doing that by wiggling my spatula around with a paper towel just to absorb it. But now that I have most of that grease, I am going to pour the sausage into my large slow cooker. I do want to let you know this is a really big batch of spaghetti sauce, so you could always half this recipe if you'd like. Now I'm adding in two 29 ounce cans of tomato sauce followed by two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. My mom actually used to make this huge batch of spaghetti sauce and whatever we wouldn't eat she'd just freeze the rest in bags. Now for the seasonings I'm adding in two tablespoons of brown sugar followed by two bay leaves. These bay leaves add quite a bit of flavor and the brown sugar might sound silly to you but just trust the process. I also added in a half a teaspoon of cinnamon that also might sound silly but just trust this recipe I promise I won't lead you astray now add in two teaspoons of oregano two teaspoons of onion and garlic powder give this a stir and let this cook on low for about seven to eight hours Once the spaghetti sauce was almost through cooking, I started on my spaghetti noodles. So to this pot of boiling water, I added in those spaghetti noodles and I'm going to cook them according to the bag instructions. And here's what the spaghetti sauce looks like once it's cooked through. It doesn't look much different, but my house was smelling so, so amazing. I can't even begin to explain to you how good this spaghetti sauce is. And here's my plate of food. I topped my spaghetti with a little bit of of parmesan cheese and fresh parsley this is like my favorite spaghetti sauce of all time i also served this with a side salad and i used italian dressing for the dressing and then i also made these breadsticks they're just like quick and easy breadsticks that i made in the oven and here's what the box looks like i definitely recommend getting them i found mine at smith's 
This one is one of my all-time favorite slow cooker dinners. This enchilada pasta is so phenomenal. To my slow cooker, I added in two chicken breasts. Next, I'm adding in a four ounce can of diced green chilies, or you could use jalapenos. Then I added in 28 ounces of red enchilada sauce, along with a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of oregano, cumin, and chili powder. I'm going to put the lid on top of this and cook this on low for six to seven hours. Also, this recipe is on page 150 in my cookbook. This is just a tried and true favorite recipe of my family's. It really is so good. But once the cooking time is up to a pot of boiling water, I'm adding in 16 ounces of rotini pasta. Just cook that pasta according to the package instructions. Now I'm going to shred up the chicken. I'm just using my electric hand mixer just to make it go super duper quick. Now I'm going to add in 3 fourths cup of sour cream or or you could use a plain Greek yogurt if you'd prefer to do like a little bit higher protein, less fat. Now I also added in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. If you're not a cheese fan, just don't add the cheese in. Now I'm adding in the cooked strained pasta. Give this a good stir and you could serve it up. My favorite way to serve this enchilada pasta is with like cold taco toppings on top. The cold mixed with like the hot dinner is just like amazing. You really need to try it out. If you haven't tried this enchilada pasta, try it and top it with like avocado, diced onion, diced tomato, and cilantro with lime juice. It's so good. Now we're making this rich broccoli and cheese soup. To my slow cooker, I'm adding in about six cups of fresh broccoli florets that I cut into smaller pieces. I'm also adding in one yellow onion that I diced along with a half a cup of celery that I sliced, or you could use a half a cup of sliced carrots. I just didn't have carrots on hand, so that's why I used celery. Then I added in two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of minced garlic, and now I'm making a cornstarch slurry to help thicken the soup up. It's just one cup of vegetable broth and a third a cup of cornstarch whisked together. After I added that cornstarch slurry in, I added in five cups of vegetable broth, and then I seasoned this with a dash of pepper and salt. I gave this a really good stir, and I cooked this on low for about six to seven hours. Once the cooking time was up, I gave this another stir, and now I'm going to add in one cup of heavy cream, and then you're also going to add in your cheese at this point. I am adding in five cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I did shred my cheese fresh. I just think it melts down best with a fresh block of cheese. I gave this a stir and I cooked this on high for 30 minutes to melt the cheese down. Since our broccoli and cheese soup only has about 30 minutes left of cooking, I wanted to make these 30 minute homemade easy dinner rolls and I want to show you how I make them. So to this mixing bowl, I added in one and a fourth cup of warm water, a third a cup of vegetable oil, a fourth a cup of sugar, and then two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Yes, I said two tablespoons. And then I gave this a whisk and I let this sit for five to 10 minutes until it got bubbly like this. Now I added in a dash of of salt, one egg, and then you're going to toss in about three cups of all-purpose flour. And then you're going to put the bread hook on your mixing bowl and mix this up until it kind of gets elasticy. Um, and if it is too sticky, just add a little bit of flour in until it does become elasticy. And if you don't have a mixing machine like this, you could always mix this by hand. It will take a little bit longer, but it will work, I promise. To my 9 by 13 baking dish, I sprayed it with nonstick spray. And now you are going to make 12 dinner rolls. So just take a little bit of the dough and roll it into small balls. I covered our rolls with a towel and I let them rest for just five minutes. After five minutes, I removed the towel and I baked these in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 12 to 17 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. But here's my broccoli and cheese soup. It is so rich, creamy, and delicious. It's also very easy to make in the slow cooker like that. And here are the dinner rolls. I never make complicated dinner rolls, so this is why I love this recipe so much. They're so easy to throw together. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you there. Bye for now.